So the year is 1992. You pulled out your car audio and electronics directory looking for a four channel amplifier. What are your choices? Well, you can look for Alpine, the 3554. That retails for $480. It's 50 watts by four. Very nice amplifier. Alpine brand, of course. Hyphonics Gemini Series 8. $625, getting a little bit more expensive here. These are nice amplifiers as well. Or you could step up to the Power 300 by Rockford Fosgate for $1,000. But as many of you know who've watched videos such as the one Steve Mead did from testing this amplifier, these were way underrated. But we didn't know that back in the day, unfortunately. Make sure you check the video description. I have a link to this video, the Power 300. It's well worth the watch. So you didn't have quite enough money to get any of the other amps I showed off, but you did save up enough to get this Jensen A4320, which lists for $330, but it's actually a lot less, $219 in Crutchfield, and even less at your local Walmart, Sears, or Kmart. So we found one of these brand new, so let's take it out of the box and check it out. All right, friends, what we have here today, <laughs> we have a Jensen a4320 apparently is almost new in box. Let's pull it out. I think it's brand new. It doesn't have the manual, which I don't know why it doesn't have the manual. Maybe Noriega stole it. You big dummy! Brand new, new old stock. Nice, what you think about that? It's back in the day too, when they gave you lots of power and ground wire, you bought an amp. Look at this, already got your fork connector on there so you can eat your Chinese. And then uh, we have this one so you can go ahead and make your bad ground in your car. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. It's not all that long. It's probably about maybe five feet worth. And here's the remote connection. But man, that thing is pretty. You see that? Here on one end of the amp, you can see the remote on light. Channel mode for two channel, three channel, or four channel. The input sensitivity for channels one, two, three, and four. And then your low level RCA inputs, which are covered. I don't know if I'll be able to grab these off. They've been on there for so long. Oh, there we go. You can see these little covers here. These are rare. It's hard to find them. Not. But uh, I had to pull these off and actually do the test. But she looks pretty. As you can see here, the color is very brilliant. Very nice looking blue amplifier. And here on the opposite side, you can see the high level input, which that was in the bag. Which, yes, it is. So if you want to run speaker level inputs in here, we have it right here. You also have some mounting screws, 225 amp fuses, and then we have the speaker outputs, which are via these spring terminals. And I know these things over the years can get pretty brittle. Make sure that, that doesn't, uh, those don't break, because I know they, they do a lot, because those things just don't last. And again, here is the eight gauge power and ground. It's about five feet or so of wire. So the amp overall, I mean, obviously it's brand new, so, Take you back to the 90s here, my friends. The Jensen MOSFET Power 100 by four multi-channel amplifier, the A4320. Again, here you can see the amp and notice the 100 watt by four MOSFET power. That is what they call max power. At four ohms, it's rated 50 watts by four RMS, or you can do the three channel mode, 50 watts by two plus 125 watts or two channel, 125 watts times two RMS, and does have the peak numbers there too. As far as dimensions go, 425 millimeters long by 237 millimeters wide by 60 millimeters for the height. Now let's fire up the good old SMD, Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno, to do our RMS power output testing of this amplifier. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for links to Wilson Audio merch, smash me a thumbs up, and subscribe if you like this content. More like it coming all the time. Now let's talk about the Dyno test. There's three different tests, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. 
Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point. And dynamic is a dynamic tone mimicking IHF 202 standard. As usual, we'll use the Alpine 9815 head unit. And we'll run in four RCA jacks for all four channels here. So we can do the four channel test first. Make sure the amp is in the four channel mode. And we'll power it up. You can see the power lights on. Here you can see all the connections hooked up. These are 16 gauge. We have the big dummy loads, four ohms on the opposite two channels. And uh, so let's go ahead and start the test here. Four ohms, four channel mode. We're gonna measure two of the channels. It's rated 50 watts by four. All four channels are loaded. Here we go, certified test one kilohertz. Oh yeah, 64 and 60 watts. Yeah boy! Up next, we'll do the uncertified test, which takes us up to the clipping point. Again, one kilohertz test track. Exactly the same, 64 watts on one channel, 60 on the other. Dynamic burst power. It's interesting to see the channel one is actually stronger on this one. 79, oh, 80 and 78 watts at 14.36. How about that efficiency? This is a class AB amp, so don't expect much. 57%, that's why it's so big to be a 50 watt by four amp. Now let's try two ohms in the four channel mode. We're guessing it's rated 67.5 watts by four. That's what we're gonna go with. Here we go, certified test first. 80 watts and 70 watts. And totally redeem yourself. We shouldn't give uh, Jensen all that much credit because they did put 100 watts by four on the amp. But the RMS power ratings is definitely meeting. Uncertified again, exactly the same as the certified, 80 watts and 71. Let's try that dynamic burst power, two ohms, one kilohertz. Nicely over 100 watts, you can see that. Channel one is more powerful here, 121 to 110. You never hear that, uh, the difference in that volume. It's just so minimal. And as far as efficiency goes, 40% efficient. Again, class AB amps, that's, uh, yep, that's their forte. We're gonna bridge the four channels down to two now to test it that method. And here's the connection on the back. You see we use channel one and channel four for the input, and there's the wiring guide for the speakers. We'll switch the mode to two channel. And here you can see the wiring A positive, B negative, C positive, D negative. 4 ohms bridge, the amp is rated 125 watts by 2 at 14.4 volts. What can we get? Here we go, 1 kilohertz track. Oh yes, 168 and 161. We're going to assume Jack is the one who uh, rated the amp. So, <laughs> Way to go, Jack. Uncertified up to clipping, 2 ohms, I'm sorry, 4 ohms, 2 channels, 168 and 161 at 14.3 volts. Dynamic power, let's send a pulse tone into the amp. Look at this. Nicely over 200 watts, 224 and 220 at 14.34. What about that efficiency? 47.4%, again, class AB is what you should expect. It's amazing this amp still works, almost 30 years old. How about results? We'll call this the old school budget king. Here are the results, you can see it passed the test. It did its RMS power ratings at all different loads, even at less than 14.4 volts. We were happy overall. Now let's hook it up in a three channel mode to some speakers and see how it sounds and find out. Do it bump though. Let's try some Groove Tube by Audio Hertz. Awesome. Tune in. should know this song by heart. Amazer Laser.
Here we have the internals. Typical 90s Korean amplifier. This is a class AB amplifier. Check out the single-sided board. There's a transformer. There's some 35 volt caps and 2200 microfarad here, 35 volts. So I'm sure those are the same 2200 microfarad. And yeah, it is classic 90s Korean design. Just very basic all through the whole components. There's no surface mount anything on here. This is just really cool for it to be this old. I mean, what, 25 years or so old, maybe a little bit more for this amp. See all the spaghetti wiring? <laughs> here you'll notice the two different parts of the amp, the power supply section and the output section. Those are divided into two separate boards in this particular amplifier. Pretty neat. Old school Jensen, classic Korean 90s car amplifier sold in the USA. So I got out the FLIR camera here to check out the internal temperature of the components inside the amp. You can see here Fahrenheit, it got over 100 degrees at some of these components. These were resistors, I believe, right here in the middle. And we're following it along, of course, to the transformer, which is the hottest part, which is around 108 degrees at its warmest. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of this amplifier from 1992. The good stuff, good looks. We love the blue color. It met the rated RMS power output. It's budget price for back then, four, three, or two channel operation. And yeah, it still works. 30 years old almost, brand new and still works. So very impressed with that. Could be better. Doesn't have any crossovers this model. The speaker output terminals are those hateful kind of push terminals. The power and ground wires are direct. The coolness factor, Jensen is not the best known brand. It is big and inefficient, unfortunately, and that's just due to the class AB design. So thanks as always for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this throwback video of this budget Jensen amp way back from 1992 to about 1994 for this particular model. But yeah, it did its rated power RMS style. We appreciate everybody watching, especially those who are on patreon.com slash old school stereo. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Here's the bottom of the amp. You can see this is really nice because it shows you uh, how to do your wiring here for your output, whether it's four channel, three channel, or two channel. You don't even need the manual. Looks like it's left, positive, right, negative, which is a kind of a standard for most amplifiers that are bridgeable. We have a 30 year old silica gel pack here taped to the back. Helps keep everything nice and fresh. We have the serial number and model number, which I covered up and you guys may wonder why you cover that stuff up. And it's because, I'm gonna cover that one up too. It's because if um, somebody claims, you know, hey, it's my amplifier, I have the serial number. Well, yeah, I've got a video out there that's got the serial number on it. So uh, anybody could, could claim it was theirs. But yeah, there you have it, brand new. What do you say we take a look at the guts? I'm pretty interested in those. Let's uh, take the bottom panel off. Jensen A4320. We're gonna try the bridge test. So four channels bridge down to two. We're gonna try it at 40 hertz, see if there's any difference from the one kilohertz track. Here we go, certified run is first. One thirty-two and one twenty-six. So it is quite a difference in power. See if we can get a different power here at the uncertified test. Those have been identical across the board. Yep, we get a little bit more, 156 and 149. Four ohms bridged at 40 hertz dynamic. See how much dynamic capability the amp has. There you go, 190, 184.